so far we have discussed about many disasters that occur on the earth in response to external forces the earth experiences and internal forces that earth experiences. Let us not carry the impression that there is only the disaster at all. Earth this is the place where we live, it has provided so much of resources for us. We are thankful to our mother earth. Earth resources we do not mean only rocks and minerals and water and petroleum other things. That day we have mentioned even the land form, the soil, the atmosphere, everything is the gift of the nature. But in this under civil engineering purview our domain we focus on earth resources to minerals, rocks and water. No doubt petroleum is also the earth resources, but its application is not dominantly by civil engineers, public in general. Civil engineers also use, although extraction of the oil involves so many civil engineering, we focus more on rocks, minerals and water. Earth resources, minerals. What do we mean by mineral? A hard part what we get on the surface of the earth or at a depth in the crust and there are also rocks. What is the rock? What is the mineral? How they are different? What are the unique characteristics of the mineral? What are the characteristics of the rocks? How best we can make use of them? How we will add on value? to those by engineering those resources. If at all I have to add on value to these resources by engineering, I must have the knowledge of the characteristics of the rocks or the minerals. If I know them, their properties, so their behavior, their composition, etc., that enables me to add on value to it. Example, every rock contains iron, but it is not possible to use them. In general, rock may contain minerals like corundum. I cannot use it. There is a water at a depth. I have to take it out. I have to do certain engineering. It means interaction of a technologically skilled manpower, the civil engineers. With these natural resources, we can add and sustain our development, engineering, economy, etc. Thus, to facilitate this, we need to know the type of earth resources we are interacting. Let us begin with our discussion on mineral. What is a mineral? It is a naturally occurring, yes, it is a homogeneous substance. It has a definite chemical composition, definite atomic arrangement or structure and it is formed by inorganic process. This is the definition of a mineral, very important in understanding. It has definite atomic arrangement, definite chemical composition, it is homogeneous and inorganic. While applying hard parts of the earth material we get, whether that is a rock or a mineral, this definition is very important. Minerals can be classified into the rock forming minerals and ore minerals. 
what is a rock forming minerals there are several rocks made up of several minerals and these minerals determine the type of rock their engineering properties and commonly found each mineral found in certain proportion and they do not make a the rock mineral present in the rock themselves do not make any industrial or value but they determine the properties of the rock and such minerals which are found in abundance in the rocks of the crust are called rock forming minerals example quartz feldspar mica amphibole these are some of the rock forming minerals they are present in a rock quartz if a present 99% it's a resource it's an industrial mineral glass industry if it is 99% it is a industrial mineral it become i can use it in industry if content of the quartz is only 40% 35% in a rock i cannot use this then it become a rock forming mineral mineral by itself cannot qualify whether it is a rock forming or industrial its a concentration decides in a rock i can have calcite or carbonate mineral if it a material 100% 80% calcite mineral yes this can be a good raw material for our industry mica 85% 90% 100% mica it is a good uh, raw material for industry but if it is found in 2% 3% 5% 10% in a rock this is not a raw material for the industry but a this is present in the rock and they determine the properties of the rock and type of the rock and we call them as rock forming minerals generally these are silicate minerals silicate minerals are difficult to process chemically if i have to take for example yesterday i have quoted an example of feldspar al2o3 al2o3 si8 like if then this is a complex mineral that is a feldspar it contains al but i cannot extract aluminum economically from the feldspar it is a silicate associated with aluminum is associated with silica and oxygen a difficult chemical process is involved it is not easy to extract aluminum from such mineral i have to damage destruct the structure break the structure release the aluminum take it out a complex chemical process is involved it is not economical therefore these silicate minerals in general are called rock forming minerals on the other hand there are some minerals like a carbonate group cacao3 example gypsum or some clay group minerals or sulfides pbs fes2 oxide group fe2o3 fe3o4 these are iron oxide minerals when a mineral is in oxide form carbonate form it is easy to recover the required metal out of it it is then called ore mineral so what is basically rock forming mineral and ore mineral in general i can say silicate minerals are called rock forming minerals non silicate minerals like oxide sulfide sulfate carbonate etc are 
ஓர் மினரல்ஸ் ஆர் இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் மினரல்ஸ் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஜிப்சம் சிஏஎஸ்ஓ ஃபோர் என்ஹெச் டூ ஓ திஸ் இஸ் சல்ஃபேட் சிஏஎஸ்ஓ ஃபோர் என்ஹெச் டூ ஓ இஸ் த ஜிப்சம் கேல்சியம் கார்பன் சிஏசிஓ த்ரீ எட்ஸெட்ரா ஈஸி டு get the required material by simple chemical process economically as i have said fe2o3 fe2o3 iron oxide i can easily drive out this oxygen and can get the metal similarly for gypsum this is a simple come caso4 nh2o this is nothing but calcium sulfate i can easily drive out that then i can get calcium oxide so this is a gypsum which is widely used in a cement industry to increase the setting level of the cement yes now by simple technique calcium carbonate i write here one minute yes yes c oh sorry this is a typical chemical composition of a calcite or a rock rich in calcite maybe limestone or a marble i can easily drive out them this is soluble carbonate i can easily dissolve and recover or drive them by any method thus when the percentage of a particular material or a metal of interest is present and present in abundance like iron or hematite or pbs sulfides or fes2 iron pyrite people call f e s to this iron sulfide or p b s let sulfide these required metals are in abundance in this mineral i can get out of this this easily required metal can be extracted by simple process and get the required metal economically they become industrial mineral in general therefore sulfate sorry silicate minerals are rock forming minerals not easy to break their structure not easy to extract any metal present in them economically and their concentration is less and they determine the property of of the rocks in which they are present we call them silicate minerals and call them rock forming minerals the oxide the sulfides the carbonates the sulfates are all we call industrial minerals or ore forming minerals because we can get easily extract them economically and get out of this unwanted materials that is the difference between the rock forming mineral and the ore minerals what do we study here here we try to understand what is their properties properties are very important it's a physical properties maybe hardness maybe weakness or some shining property example i quote little later the composition there are uses in the manufacture of construction materials ornamental industry etc all that we are going to study here that is that branch which deals with these their properties physical properties chemical composition their application etc in various industries we study and mineralogy minerals we study so various these are broadly 
grouped into based on their common physical chemical properties we call quartz group are also called silica group we call sio2 is a composition of the quartz and in general we call them silica group sio2 sio2 etc composition silica group feldspar example it is a complex chemical composition al2 si3 o8 is a complex i can have sodium na ca k k al2 si3 o8 na al2 si3 o8 ca al2 si3 o8 this is a silicate and combined with one or more metal so silicate minerals have one or more metal combined with aluminum silica and then they become NaAl2SiO2 or CaAl2SiO2 KaAl2SiO2 these are all the composition of a feldspar group they have distinctly different chemical composition they are all grouped under feldspar group they have several application in industry kaolin this is a kind of clay mineral it has a kind of structure we call sheet like structure they are also called sheet silicates and they have a specific property they depending on their physical atomic arrangement and their chemical property find application in some industry example ceramic industry we have asbestos is another this is like this but in place of na we may have some other we may have mg etc but they have different physical properties and different thermal or heat response and we find them in some other industry application asbestos sheet heat proof etc carburetor group we use general in cement industry cacio3 gypsum just now i gave the example caso4 nh2o they also find in silica mica is another mineral silicate sheet like structure which finds application in electrical industry as insulator ore minerals like iron ore chromite bauxite these are all oxides of one or the other metal they accordingly we classify them and try to study their properties their composition etc yes what are the general properties we study generally we look for color of a mineral why color is so important at least i have hundreds of minerals to be classified can i say dark material it is gold not i know gold is shining yellow can i say white material is iron ore no i know iron uh, steel has a specific steel gray color dark color coal it cannot be white it means color is one important parameter help us to identify that not itself is the our goal iron is also a metal ductile and malleable gold is also malleable and ductile of course at a different scale can we use iron for our jewelry not possible because gold has an attractive color in addition to other properties so color is an important parameter that decides its application in industry also example some variety of quartz are ruby or reddish pink in color some greenish color those 
which we use attractive gun metal we call for our ring is an attractive color white color people are rarely prefer with the gun metal ruby color reddish green color attractive so color adds value to it although there are other several properties are same or similar color can add after all what is a color color is due to selective absorption and reflection a right light fall on the material depending on its atomic packing and arrangement it is able to absorb several colors and reflect only one particular color if the material reflects red it means from all the light which we say seven colors light contains all the six it has absorbed the one it has reflected back the one which is reflected back become the color of the mineral that all depends on the atomic packing in other word color is dependent on atomic packing and atomic packing determines the mineral we have defined the mineral therefore color is important but it is not always a deciding factor as well there are certain limitations attached to it color is very sensitive to any minor minor quantity of impurity present example i have a bucket of water pure water 100% water if i add a drop of ink to the water bucket of water what happens just a drop it is point not not one maybe but then also it can change the color of the water in the bucket it means color is so sensitive even for point not 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 one percent level impurity i have to use this with the caution what second color can be modified by atmospheric effects therefore i will be in trouble in making use of color alone as an identification factor depending on the atomic packing same chemical composition can give rise to different color example i have quartz it can be white color it can be green color it can be pink rose pink color i have then jasper its chemical composition once again sio2 its composition once again sio2 it is not the chemical composition that determines the color it is white pink like that whereas jasper is reddish flesh red chemical composition in the same what made sio2 has a different atomic packing jasper has a different we call it crystalline we call it a crypto crystalline minutely crystalline very minute crystalline we have a gate a g a t e a gate is another mineral which has sio2 composition but its color is a dark often gray often like it means it is not the chemical composition alone its atomic packing is involved what did i say in the first example i said bucket of water minor impurity can change the color chemical composition although same atomic packing can also change then i have a mineral called rose pink color just now i have said quartz we call rose quartz we have another mineral called amethyst a m e t h y s t amethyst is another mineral uh, 
which has very very minute quantitative manganese impurity. It become violet color, titanium present, it become a reddish color, it become a rose pink color. Carbon impurity, it makes us a dark or gray color, we call smoky quartz. It means chemical composition 99.999%, although SiO2, very minute quantity of impurities can change the color. Atomic packing can also change the color. I have to use a color with caution, but 100% it is very important depending on the atomic packing example, diamond, it is colorless in fact, quartz is also colorless, but why diamond shines in different di direction with a different color is, its atomic packing is such that the light ray which once enters the diamond crystal undergoes several times internal reflection because of several times of total internal reflection finally light comes out and it shines with a different color in a different direction. It is governed by atomic packing, chemical composition different, carbon chemical composition diamond. Same chemical composition carbon coal, same chemical composition carbon lignite or graphite, chemical composition carbon, 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 but their crystalline habit is different accordingly, they shine differently. It is not totally chemical composition alone, atomic packing is also involved. Let us not Forget this is important, but the limitation of although I have to attach in application. Another problem is I have several minerals. Gold is golden yellow, pyrite is also golden yellow. Just because yellow I cannot mistake this as gold, correct? So several minerals can have similar color, color is not a deciding, often several minerals can have the same color, just now I said diamond can also be colorless and quartz is also colorless, calcite also can have a pure calcite is a colorless, then some variety of zeolite also can be colorless, then just because of it colorless they are not the same. So, means one and the same mineral can be present in different color, different minerals can have the similar color, it all depends on the combination of chemical composition and atomic packing, friends. Form, along with the color, form can help me to identify. There are several minerals, they have a special habit. Quartz, a mineral, can have hexagonal shape. All minerals cannot have that. There are many other transparent minerals, not necessarily their hexagonal shape. And I can take advantage of this shape. Example, there are certain minerals, zircon, is one mineral, xenotype is another mineral which both have similar reddish brown color, but their crystal habit and their other physical properties are different. I can distinguish form or external shape or outline of a mineral is governed by internal atomic packing. Particular atomic packing is responsible for particular external shape. Therefore, that become an important parameter or a property for me to identify. Not only that, that determines its application. Example, 
calcite has some atomic packing responsible for double refraction. Hence, it can be used in microscope as a nickel. There are some other minerals which do not have this property cannot be used. Therefore, the specific atomic packing responsible for specific form is an insight for me for its application in addition to its identification. I can differentiate the minerals. Streak. What is a streak? It is a color of a powder of a mineral. Generally, I have an unglazed porcelain plate. On that, I rub the mineral and I get some color. I say color, that color, if red, streak of the mineral is red. If that is gray, streak of the mineral is gray, like that. What is the streak? I take a mineral and rub it on an unglazed porcelain plate, it gives some color and I define that as a streak of that mineral. But streak plate itself has some property, hardness. A mineral which is harder than the streak plate do not yield, do not give its a powder on the plate. Example, when I rub a mineral called diamond or a corundum or a quartz on a streak plate, they do not produce their powder because those minerals are harder than the streak plate. It does not mean that if I powder the minerals, they do not have any color. Example, corundum or diamond or quartz, if I powder, they may have a specific color, but they do not give their powder on the streak plate. I say no streak means no color. That does not mean that its powder has no color. It do not produce its powder on the plate because of the relative hardness between that mineral and the streak plate. In simple, we wish to say that those minerals whose hardness is less than that of the streak plate can give its powder on the plate and then helpful to identify the mineral. Example, I have minerals like hematite. Hematite is a mineral composition Fe2O3. I have another mineral called magnetite, magnetite composition Fe3O4. Both are iron oxides different degree of oxygen. Now, hematite when I rub on the streak plate, it gives a cherry red. What is that color? Cherry red. When I rub it, the magnetite on the streak plate, it gives a black color. Both are hematite. Now, I can find out what is what. Hematite and magnetite, I can easily distinguish based on a simple streak plate. Now, I am a benefited. How much percentage of iron I get if I extract this? How much percentage of iron I can get extract this? I can decide upon where I get more iron, where I get less iron, how much difficult to drive out oxygen here, more oxygen here, etc. Those decides upon my process to extract iron from this. I give one more example. We have invariably seen the gold. Gold is a golden yellow color. I have said pyrite, pyrite has FES2. F E S 2. 
whereas gold has age. Both are golden yellow color, both are metallic in shining, metals ductile obviously. Both have high density. In a hand specimen, I cannot distinguish between gold and pyrite. Gold has density of 19.3, pyrite has 6.5, but I cannot distinguish between them because they are very small, minute particles. If I have a big chunk of gold and pyrite, yes, I can easily distinguish. But when minute particles, small amount, I cannot distinguish pyrite and gold by feeling their weight. And to look, both are golden yellow color, both shine. People take disadvantage or advantage of this. We must have heard sometimes people come and they say, we will wash your ornaments, give your ornaments. What they do? From our real gold ornament, they take away a layer of gold and coat that our ornament with a pyrite solution. What happens? Our ornament, now a layer of gold they have removed, a layer of pyrite they have put there, weight remains the same and that our ornament shines. We are so happy. But after few days, what happens? That ornament starts turning to black. Pyrite FES2 now, this under presence of oxygen, they get oxidized and they become dark. So, it turns into iron oxide. We have lost the gold and in place of we got the pirate because they have similar shining property. People use it to fool us. But we are smart. We take the streak of the material whether the gold or pyrite on a streak plate. Pyrite gives greenish black streak, gold gives golden yellow color. I can easily distinguish. You go to goldsmith, he will say this is 22 carat gold, 24 carat gold or 20 carat. True gold has a 24 carat gold. 24 karat gold has a true yellow color. If a copper mix, it the carat become 22, its the color moves towards a reddish. If a silver mix, it moves towards the whitish, maybe 22 carat, maybe 22 carat. But the properties, yes. <coughs> Sorry. Thus, streak of a mineral is so important and the streak plate is a simple tool. The general streak plate which we use in our laboratory is for general purpose. There are thousands of minerals which I can identify. But goldsmith's job is not to identify thousands of minerals on the earth. His job is only to identify the quality of the gold. Therefore, he is happy with a specific plate. It is nothing but a modified streak plate only to test the gold and other ornaments. He is not able to test all these minerals which I have in my laboratory on the earth I find. That is also the simple principle of streak. Friends, streak of a mineral is important but also has certain limitation. That is FES2 is a pure pyrite, gives a greenish black streak if it is exposed to air for some days, water, oxygen, a small coating of dark coating on it you may get. Then it gives a different streak because its property is slightly altered. I have said magnetite gives a black streak, hematite gives a cherry red streak. Hematite or magnetite both if exposed to air 
they can be hydrated absorb water when they get exposed to atmosphere hydrated they become limonite limonite is another mineral limonite is another mineral it has example fe2 o3 n H2O or Fe3O4 NH2O invariable. They have absorbed certain amount of water, got hydrated. Their property changed now. This mineral, whether it was earlier hematite or magnetite, and Fe3O4, both now we call limonite, they give brick red streak, a deeper color. What I used to get for hematite is a cherry red. Now the same is a deeper color. Carefully listen. It is hydrated. There may be weathering of or softening of some minerals. Then also they may give some kind of streak, similar powder or similar color I find. Therefore, weathering effect, alteration effect of a given mineral can change its color towards a lighter or deeper side. I must be cautious about how far I can dependent on this. There are many minerals which do not give streak at all. We have mentioned corundum, diamond, quartz, etc. Therefore, it has a limitation. I cannot apply to all mineral. But one green signal from the streak is that if the mineral do not give its streak, it has some unique property. And this is an insight. That property I can make use. Can I make use of them in some ornamental industry? Yes, those minerals which do not give streak but also has hardness more than they can be used in ornamental industry. That is, they are not jewels, ornaments, ornamental industry. The gun metal, it is just a, a, a they call simple crystal. Its value will be 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 300 rupees. But I am using along with the ring, it adds value to my ring. A plain ring, golden ring, may be costly, whatever it may be. But its attraction increases when I use certain colored crystals. In the necklace, we have seen certain crystals, colored varieties, they have used. And these have a specific property. They do not have streak. So, the moment I have a mineral which do not give streak, the next immediate that strikes into my mind is, can I use this in some industry, jewelry industry? Yes. Luster. It's a shining property basically. Appearance or shine of a mineral in light. How a mineral shines? We have mentioned now there are some minerals like I have mentioned the quartz is a mineral which has a shining property, luster. I have a jasper is a mineral of SiO2 composition, similar atomic packing, but shining property is a little different. What shall I do? I have similar physical properties, I have similar chemical composition, but shine is not that attractive. Quartz has attractive shining, jasper do not have attractive shining, what shall I do? Now I do engineering with the jasper, I can cut it, I can polish it the way I like, then it becomes and it gets a shining. Luster is one property which helps me. Can I do engineering with it? 
that's an important insight thus luster is one important physical property it's a shine of a mineral how exactly i can increase a shining property where it can qualify and why it shines again it's a specific atomic packing we know metals all shine why they have what we call in general metallic luster metallic shining because they have specific atomic packing there are some minerals loose atomic packing once a light penetrates enter they do not come out soil example do not shine at all because they are loose material similarly individual mineral particle also has loose atomic packing they do not shine in other word luster is a property which helps me to identify a given mineral and then decide upon whether i can make use of those minerals in specific industry can i do engineering add on value to it yes that helps me through knowledge of luster in hydra oh. sorry so we will continue cleavage fracture are interrelated i take it a little later i have mentioned atomic packing now i come to this hardness we will discuss this a little later because they are interrelated and related to hardness as well what's the hardness he is very hard i cannot defeat him he is so strong minerals are strong they are hard so how do we measure the resistance offered by a mineral for abrasion i have a mineral i try to rub it with something then if i can cut it make a groove impact on it if the mineral yields to the force i apply then that is a measure of its hardness i can simply say i have a mineral i try to scratch my fingernail i can say it is a soft what do i mean soft somewhere i have to relate this to number that become more appealing if i say soft and hard it is just a relative term i come to that point a little later we have more a scale of hardness in that if a mineral has a hardness less than 2.5 we call it a soft how to find the hardness i will explain what is a soft a mineral which is scratchable with the finger nail we call it a soft a mineral which is not scratchable with the finger nail but scratchable with a glass broken glass piece i have a broken glass here and there we get plenty in our construction site i scratch on the mineral if the permanent grooves are present i try erase this yes still i find a permanent groove then that mineral is softer than that of a glass plate mineral whose hardness as per mohr scale is range be ranging between 2.5 and 4.5 can produce their grooves can produce grooves on the mineral a mineral which is a scratchable by a glass plate not scratchable with a fingernail its a hardness is medium we call between 2.5 to 4.5 a medium hardness this is very important remember friends a mineral which is not even scratchable with a glass plate but possible to scratch them with a an iron needle knife generally we get in the construction site in the site i can use my coin whatever it may be a mineral 
which is a scratchable with a knife, an iron needle or a coin. I mean its hardness is less than 6.5, not scratchable more than 6.5. Thus, I get a relative hardness of a given mineral. Now, this gives me further insight into engineering of these natural resources. Friends, we have tried with the color, form, stick, luster and adding hardness. How with different degree of engineering we are going to make the resource more and more attractive not only to identify find a suitable application, add on value to those resources. We will be benefited by our other applications we shall try now.